Hello. So it's been over a year since the SE1000 came out, and in that time we've been slowly fixing bugs and adding new features. Now we finally have a new firmware version ready for release, and in this video I'll be explaining how to add these new features to your SE1000. A quick word of warning though, by the time you see this video it might be very out of date, so check the video description below for the latest information. Also, please note that this update will only work on standard SC1000s, so don't attempt to use this if you own an SC1000DS. Updating the firmware is pretty easy, just download the update file from the link in the video description and unzip it to the root of a USB stick. Connect the USB stick to your SC, make sure you have some headphones or speakers connected, hold down either or both of the Beats Select buttons and turn it on. After a few seconds, you'll hear an audio message telling you if the update worked or not. Your SC1000 has been updated successfully. If it didn't work or you hear no message at all, try a different USB stick. To check that the update worked, you can have the SC1000 tell you what version is now installed. Turn off the SC1000, turn the beats volume up and the samples volume down, hold either or both sample select buttons, and switch the SC1000 on while keeping the track select button held. After a few seconds, you'll hear a voice saying the firmware version over and over again. Firmware version 1.3 Hit one of the beat select buttons to exit this mode. Now you're ready to use the new features. Let's start with the stuff you don't need any new hardware for. There's a pitch control, which you access by pressing both of the track select buttons on the channel you want to change. Now the jog wheel acts like a massive pitch knob. To exit this mode, just press any track select button. If you hold down both track select buttons for a second or so, it will play a random track. This feature was actually in the OG firmware, but I changed how to access it, so be aware of that. Holding down all four of the track select buttons will record your cuts to a file in the USB stick. You'll hear a beep to tell you this has started. To stop recording, hold all the buttons down again, and you'll hear several beeps. You have to stop recording before turning off your SC, or else the file might not be written properly. The files are written to the root of the USB stick, and will be called SC followed by a load of numbers. The file can be imported into Audacity or whatever as a raw file, and its type is Stereo Little Endian signed 16-bit 48kHz. I've also included some emergency samples, so if you don't connect a USB stick at all, then it'll load these rather than just not working. Recording is disabled in this mode, however, as obviously it has nowhere to record to. Perhaps the most important new feature is the settings file, which is a text file that lives on your USB stick. You can edit it to change various aspects of the SC's behaviour. Just dive in and start editing, there are lots of examples in the file itself, and you can't break your SC by doing this. If you mess up, you can just unzip the settings file from the update again. I suppose the most anticipated new feature, however, is the support for adding cue point and start-stop buttons. If you don't mind a bit of soldering, then these can be added by modifying the SC itself, or if you're less confident, you can use external MIDI devices, which I'll talk about later. Here's an SC I've modded with 8 buttons, which give us 5 cue points, 2 start-stop buttons, and a shift button. You set a cue point by pressing a button, then each additional press of the button jumps back to that point. You can erase a cue by holding down the shift button and a cue at the same time. Start-stop buttons work just like the start-stop buttons on a turntable, and can have their break time adjusted in the settings file. They can be set up to control beats or samples. The final feature I want to talk about is USB MIDI devices. Connect any class compliant USB MIDI controller to the SC1000 and you can use it to trigger cue points, or have it change the pitch of the sample when you play notes, similar to a Vestax PDX3000 or Controller 1. Now obviously there's only one USB port on the SC, so you'll need a USB hub to be able to plug in both the USB MIDI device and the USB stick with your samples in it at the same time, but it works great with USB MIDI adapters, so you can, in a roundabout way, connect virtually any MIDI device. You want to control this thing with a Prophet 600, then knock yourself out. One convenient controller is a phone in USB MIDI mode, which all Android devices have supported natively since version 6. I'm sure that it would be possible to get Apple devices working too, using something like the iConnect MIDI 2 Plus. The best app I've found for controlling everything is Lemur, and I've made a custom project for it that lets you trigger cue points, change pitch, and play notes without having to set up any mappings in the settings file at all. Check the video description for guides on how to set up Lemur. In the future I'll probably make projects for other phone MIDI apps, as Lemur is quite expensive, buggy and complicated to set up. Again, check the video description for more details. There are a lot of cheap MIDI pad controllers that also look ideal, such as the Korg Nano Pad, the Akai LPD-8, or the Omnitronic Pad 12 or Sub-Zero Mini Pad, which seems to be clones of each other. But you'll have to set up your own mappings for them in the settings file if you want to use them. But regardless of what MIDI device you use, the setup goes like this. Take a USB hub and connect it to your SC1000. Now connect your USB stick with samples on it and the MIDI device you want to use, in my case a cheap old broken Android phone, to the hub. Then switch on the SC and that's it. If you're using an Android phone, you'll need to check your notification bar for a USB mode select and change it to MIDI device. 
This unfortunately has to be done every time you switch the SC1000 on. At least on my phone there's no way to lock it onto MIDI mode. If you're struggling to get it switched to MIDI mode in time, you can increase the MIDI delay setting in the settings file. So that just about covers everything with this update. Um, check the description of this video for links to more information about MIDI mapping, installing buttons, tweaking the settings file, and anything else you might need. Thanks for watching.